Hi everyone, uh, welcome to GATE uh, Data Science course. So this is our second lecture on counting. Uh, here in this lecture we will discuss factorials. In the last lecture we discussed rule of sum and product and like keep remembering all these so like always follow the lectures in this order because like we will be using all the concepts which we have learned so far uh, in the in the coming videos so like follow the order it will be really helpful so yeah what is factorial so factorial is defined to be this okay like you cannot like derive it factorial n is defined to be the product of all whole numbers up to n Okay, whole number is what? Uh, like uh, uh, numbers, oh, sorry, natural numbers uh, up to n, okay? So starting from 1, 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 up to n, this is what n factorial is. So factorial of a non negative integer. So factorials are not defined for negative integers. We use the notion of factorial of negative integers, we will use that, okay? Later when I teach like binomial theorem and stuff like that, like we will use the notion of factorial of negative integers but that's not how factorial is defined we will just use it for sake but factorial by definition is only defined for positive integers and uh, the factorial of n is denoted by n factorial you write it like this or like this Some, sometimes you will see this notation also okay so you can write it like this factorial of n plus one so this symbol is also for factorial and like the exclamation mark is also for factorial so it's the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n as I told you and what is the motivation behind it why do we use it because it is used in arrangements okay in the coming few, few videos I will explain you what selection and arrangement means so for now like just know this thing ki factorial came in picture when we wanted to count the number of ways to arrange things <coughs> and actually the number of ways to arrange n objects in a row is factorial so how do we prove it so firstly let's know like what arrangement is so let's say uh, yeah like like you had like school right like like you uh, went to prayers and there are 30 students in your class and generally there is an order in which students stand in a in prayer while doing prayers right Gen like i used to have that ascending order of height right so that like the student in the back can see so generally that is the order so this is what order is okay like people like love order okay that's why we have like like government everything like we want to have order okay otherwise like like uh, it's all chaos so if you have n objects put put up randomly uh, it's very difficult to derive insights out of it when we put them in some order ascending order or something it's easier to see certain properties of the data set for example if you want to uh, find the middle element which is called median right you have to arrange them in some uh, fashion right ascending order or descending order so this is called order like arranging elements in certain order uh, that is called an arrangement and what is uh, n factorial the number of all possible ways in which we can arrange n elements so for example if we have let's say four elements one two three four or let's take three only okay so let's say we have three elements so this is one order in which i am please i have placed them this can be one order two one three uh, and then then you can have one three two then you can have three one two then you can have three two one okay and then you can have two three one so these are six possible orders in which I can arrange these are arrangements right uh, order is always arrangement so these are six possible ways in which I can arrange uh, three numbers so how did the formula for n factorial came in so we know that n factorial is the number of ways in which we can arrange n elements in a row so let's say uh, let's take the same example okay so for three elements we saw that there are six ways i'll just write them quickly here so for three elements we saw there are six possible ways okay now somebody like like now we will use the concept of recursion okay so now let's say i want to find all the number of ways in which i can arrange four integers in a row 
okay so now i have 1 2 3 4 okay so by definition this is 3 factorial we know that number of ways in which we can arrange n elements in a row is n factorial for 3 we calculated it is 6 so this is 3 factorial which is 6 now let's say i want to arrange 4 elements so i have 4 places to fill in right just see okay for the first place how many options do i have i can have 1 here i can have 2 here i can have 3 here and i can have 4 here rule of product how so my task is what starting point my task is what to find the number of ways in which i can arrange four numbers in a row that is my task i break it into two parts first task t1 then t2 rule of product very simple okay so first task is to fill the first place fill the first place and uh, fill so this this i'm talking about four right now okay arranging four elements and the next task is fill the remaining three places fill the remaining places that's it i have to do task t1 and t2 first i will fill, fill the first place and then i will fill the second place so it's the rule of product how many options do i have to fill the first place I can put any element from these four elements in the first place. So I have four options to fill the first place. In how many ways can I fill the remaining three places? That is by definition three factorial. Right. So for the remaining three places, what do I have to do? I just have to arrange three elements in three places. So the, we already did that. This is three factorial. So for four, uh, four elements. So the by definition, we told this previously. Ki the number of ways to arrange four elements in a row is four factorial. So we proved that 4 factorial will be what? 4 times 3 factorial. In a similar way, we can prove that for any n, the factorial of n will be what? n times n minus 1 factorial. Okay, so this is the recursive equation for factorials. For any number n, the factorial of n is what? n times n minus 1 factorial. So, and like when, when, when talking about recursions, we have a base case, so we can always have a base case, let's say one. What is the number of ways to arrange one object in a row? One, okay, you just have to write that object in that place. So one factor will be one, this is your base case. So that way you can now compute any numbers factorial, right? So yeah, this is how it is defined. So let's see a few examples. Uh, so also like try to memorize a few factorials, sometimes it speeds up your calculation. Uh, anyways, when you do a lot of problems in counting, okay, trust me, you will tend to remember at least factorials up to 5 or 6. Okay, so 5 factorial is 120, 720 and uh, I remember it up to 10, okay, so 7, 8, 9, 10, but it, you, you won't need it, but trust me, when you do like a lot of math, you will tend to remember factorials. In gate, you will be given a calculator, but that is dummy, okay, trust me. Uh, in three hours, you won't be using it. They don't ask you heavy mathematical questions at all. Okay, even in counting, if they ask questions, it will you, it will be faster when you solve it by hand because you'll have to go to the UI, okay, and then like click on numbers. It will be like taking up a lot of time. So uh, it's easier like do practice like without calculator first. If it is like too math heavy, like use calculator. Uh, otherwise, not. So yeah. So just remember a few factorials. So one is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 6, uh, 4 is 24, 5 is 120, 6 is 720, uh, 7 is 5080. You won't need after 6 generally. Uh, most of the questions will be so like why I'm telling you this most of the questions will be arranging six objects or like let's say you want to count the number of arrangements of words or something most of them will be six or seven words. So otherwise like uh, you can have 8 is 40320 and 9 is 362880. Okay, so like try to memorize a few of them. So the next question is, uh, uh, you have to find the number of factors. Remember we have learned this in the last lecture. How do we count the number of factors? So in this question you have to find, count the number of factors of 10 factorial. And uh, most the key to find the number of factors was what to do uh, prime factorization right so in factorial remember like don't calculate this the entire number and do the prime factorization don't do that 
it will take a lot of time because 10 factorial will be 3628800 doing its prime factorization will take 2 3 minutes don't do it that way use the property of factorial we know the definition of 10 factorial right what it is it's the product of all natural numbers up to 10 right so try to write like prime factorization is what remember expressing the number as power of its prime factors right so what are the prime numbers less than 10 see 10 factorial is what 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 4 5 into up to 10 right so what prime numbers might come 13 cannot come right because 13 is greater than 10 in this entire factorial 13 can never come the only prime numbers which will come is 2 3 5 and 7 in 10 factorial we will have these prime numbers we cannot have 11 13 17 right we will only have prime numbers less than 10 now we need to calculate their powers so just calculate their powers okay it's easy so just see how many times 2 is coming so 2 will come in 2 okay just, just go with every number so 10 is 10 factorial is what 1 into 2 into 3 3 has come once into 4 4 is what uh, 2 twice okay then 5 6 6 is what 2 into 3 7 is what 7 8 is what 2 cube and then 9 9 is what 3 square and then 10 10 is what 2 into 5 this is what uh, prime factorization of 10 factorial is okay right like simple so it is what 2 to the power 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 3 to the power 4 5 to the power 2 7 to the power 1 now it's easy you just like what is the number of factors never memorize the formula i told you like if you do if you forget the formula you can derive it straight away number of factors how will you do it you have how many options for 2 8 plus 1 9 because you can take 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 1 up to 2 to the power 8 you have 9 options for 2 you have 5 options for 3 you have 3 options for 5 you have 2 options for 7 that is your answer okay it will be 270 and now again very interesting problem okay like when when i tell you it's an interesting problem try to pause the video and think about it on your own and uh, then try to see the solution okay it will like help you a lot uh, trust me like it's not about just seeing the lectures and uh, solving the problems like while seeing the lecture uh, i used to do this like use this strategy always pause on the problem first and uh, try to solve it on your own <coughs> and if you spend 30 minutes on a problem it will be more beneficial okay then just watching a one minute video and get, like, seeing the solution because when you spend those 30 minutes you will know all the wrong ways to solve the problem and that will save a lot of time later in the exam cool <coughs> very interesting problem what is the number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial it is an aptitude question it has been asked before i guess in je means okay and it can definitely be asked in uh, gate as well it's an aptitude question and uh, it comes under counting so like 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 uh, okay I'll, I'll give you the solution now so what uh, think about it okay 100 factorial will be a very very huge number okay definitely you cannot calculate it okay even your calculator won't in the, the, in the portal so and it is specifically telling you need to find the number of zeros at the end see never this question will never come like this how many zeros are there because like see this is a number five zero four zero 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 okay there are three zeros at the end they they will never ask you the total number of zeros this you cannot calculate for this you need to calculate the entire number but if you want to count the number of zeros at the end that's a very simpler problem okay how will i do that uh, so we, you can always write a number like this in this format 504 into 1000 whenever you want to count the number of zeros at the end just split the number okay uh, all before zeros and all after zeros so it is what 504 into 10 to the power 3 and this is the number of zeros at the end whatever the power of 10 is it is the number of zeros at the end of the number and what is this it is 504 into 2 cube into 5 cube see uh, 
द प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन ऑफ टेन इज टू इंटू फाइव यू कैन नेवर मेक ए जीरो अनलेस यू डोंट हैव ए टू और फाइव टू मेक ए जीरो एट द एंड यू नीड वन टू एंड वन फाइव एंड एवरी टू एंड एवरी फाइव विल मर्ज अप एंड मेक ए टेन एंड ए जीरो एट द एंड बेसिकली सी थिंक अबाउट इट यू हैव वेरी लार्ज प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन लेट से टू टू द पावर सेवन इंटू टू थ्री टू द पावर थर्टीन इंटू फाइव टू द पावर लेट से फोर इंटू सेवन टू द पावर हंड्रेड इंटू वॉट एवर ब्ला 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 वॉट एवर प्राइम नंबर यू कैन हैव ओके वेरी लार्ज प्राइम नंबर द केपेबिलिटी ऑफ मेकिंग टेन इज ओनली फॉर लाइक ओनली टू एंड फाइव हैव द केपेबिलिटी ऑफ मेकिंग ए जीरो एट द एंड राइट बिकॉज प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन ऑफ टेन इज टू इंटू फाइव नो अदर प्राइम नंबर कैन मेक अ टेन और ए जीरो एट द एंड सो हियर इन दिस वॉट एवर नंबर दिस इज हाउ मेनी जीरोज विल यू हैव एट द एंड सी टू हैज केपेबिलिटी ऑफ मेकिंग सेवन टेन्स फाइव वी हैव फोर फाइव सो यू कैन एट मैक्स मेक फोर टेन्स यू यूज फोर ऑफ दीज फाइव एंड फोर ऑफ द टूज so whatever is the minimum of 2 and 5 whatever is the minimum of the power of 2 or 5 that will be the number of zeros at the end so that's a formula i'm giving you now a trick the number of zeros at the end of any number you just do prime factorization of the number the minimum of the power of 2 and 5 will be the number of zeros at the end so in this number there will be five four zeros at the end right so now the problem becomes simpler right you just need to calculate the minimum of the power of 2 and 5 in 100 factorial <coughs> sorry so again the problem is not that simple how will i calculate the power of 2 and the power of 5 in 100 factorial now see in any n factorial the power of 5 will be lesser then power of 2 right for example when we see the this particular thing 5 the power of 5 was only the power of 2 was 8 you will have more twos right two is a smaller prime number it will divide lot of numbers so the power of 2 will be anyways larger you just need to calculate the power of 5 because i told you the minimum of the power of 2 and 5 will be the number of zeros at the end so the problem just boils down to what is the power of 5 in the prime factorization of 100 factorial again it's an interesting problem still See now, what is hundred factorial? If you like, look close, closely. One into two into three. I'm just writing a few numbers. Then you will have a ten. So where will you have five? You will have five in all the multiples of five. You will have one five here. You will have one five here in ten. You will have one five in fifteen. You will have one. Uh, you will have two fives in twenty-five. I will come to two fives later. So basically, you will have at least one five in all multiples of five, and how many multiples of five will you have? Up to hundred, hundred upon five. Simple, right? You will have twenty multiples of five in the in hundred factorial. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, up to hundred. You will have twenty multiples of five. They will have at least one one five. All of them will have at least one one five. So you have at least twenty fives. Now some of them have two fives as well, and what are those those numbers? those can be represented like this 5 square into something so basically all multiples of 25 will have two fives right so 25 will have two fives 50 will have two fives 75 will have two fives and 100 will have two fives all the multiples of 25 will have two fives so we missed four fives so 20 are for multiple of 5 And four we missed. Where where in twenty five, fifty, seventy five, one hundred. And no number can have three fives. For for three fives to uh, for come for you to come, the number should be at least five cube, which is one twenty five. Since we are only going up to hundred factorial, you cannot have three five uh, three fives, right? So this will be the power of five twenty four. I hope you got it, and you can check like take it as a homework. Try to calculate the power of two as well. Power of two will be much higher. Okay, you don't need to calculate the power of two. Always in such problems, calculate the power of five. That will be smaller, and that will be the number of zeros at the end. So the number of zeros at the end of hundred factorial becomes twenty four. Okay, so like now you can do it for any n factorial. It will not. So doing this problem without like uh, breaking it down like this is impossible. Okay. you just have to like think clearly okay how can you make zero at the end and uh, yeah that's how you can do it cool uh, thanks a lot this is about factorials in the next lecture tomorrow we will learn uh, permutations thanks